Hi everyone and welcome back to another video. Today, we're taking this barbarian on a quest to destroy all things related to dark magic. A magic that is directly related to all these orc half-bred barbarians that have been populating his region in the north. So this guy has set out to try to stop this, but some serious challenges in the way as we take this permadeath character on our journey through the dungeon. Starting out with a very basic axe and pretty poor damage numbers. This barbarian is going to have a very difficult time dealing with that fighter we saw in the starting lobby. Luckily the sideways chop does make easy work of goblins and you do hit for around 76, 78 damage I think with the starting axe if you take axe specialization. It's basically why I do it. There is an argument you could make for crush as it allows you to basically to flee easier and survive. But that's not always, always an option. Sometimes you do have to fight, and that six or seven damage can be very, very important. We did find a felling axe quite early on, and felling axe isn't really an item I enjoy, as it means you have to be literally touching the guy's nose to hit them with it. And making up that ground on the barbarian right now with a slow moving weapon is incredibly difficult. You need to land some perfect throwing axes. They've removed drum from any other class, so drum is no longer an option. And the rage is not, it's not a huge movement speed bump as many people think. Quite early on in this one, we see a guy wielding that dark magic, which we hate ever so much. And this means, this means we are now on the hunt. We want this guy dead and gone, removed from the world of the living, as he is directly contributing to the monstrosities that are being created. This guy's backpedaling, we got a couple mobs on him. But we're gonna try to land these throwing axes, which can be can be a lot more difficult than you think with a player sidestepping. And this warlock also starts sidestepping my throwing axe swings, which makes me feel like I have T-Rex arms. And then we finally land a throwing axe, but still, he can just outrun us. So this is when you switch to the, the bare mitts. We are going to make this warlock pay for everything he's done. Landing a couple good punches. This guy dodges through the trap somehow without touching one. And now we have him cornered. Backed into a corner, this guy has nowhere left to go. Trying to land the last hit on this guy isn't easy. And unfortunately, the Death Beetle steals the satisfaction of ending the journey of that young warlock. Now we're kind of in a bit of a mess with a few mobs. Luckily, luckily, Felling Axe, Rage, one taps, Skeleton Archers. I would have been definitely taking some damage there. And now, now we have some loot. This guy got a little bit of looting done, which helps the cause quite a bit, saving me a ton of time as I don't have Crush to open doors and barrels easily. So we get kind of a nice little start going. And truly, if we escape with just what we had here, we probably could afford a nice weapon upgrade. And maybe, maybe get lucky at the Goblin Merchant. Speaking of upgrades, we do find a nice helmet. Which is a fair bit improvement over our starting helmet. So we're going to break everything, move up everything we can get, and then try to avoid that fighter that's underneath us. Hearing his plate armor blow us means we have a fully juiced purple gear fighter not too far away. If he decides to come up those stairs or break through the barricade and lead to the upper level, we're going to have a tough time finding a portal if he decides to zone us out. This is pretty much a game of chance at this point because there is no way... No way at all I can win first that type of setup. This is all about surviving the first run and looting, which we're taking a long time to do because we don't have crush, but uh, I think in the end it is worth it sometimes to have a little bit more damage. We'll probably drop that battle axe, going to be useless to us now that we have the felling axe. We're only opening this door just so I have a way out. Because I can't move so freely without Crush, I need to open doors and leave escape routes, even if they are into other messes or into the, the darkness. You do have to leave openings constantly because you will get trapped and cornered as a barbarian with no way to go but into the player that's kiting you repeatedly. This chest sometimes has nice stuff in it. We get a Bardiche. I love the Bardiche, but it's only really good against other players using Felling Axes, Battle Axes, or perhaps the Bardiche. You can't really out-trade 
anybody that can basically just step backwards and dodge every single swing. As much as I love it, and I try to force myself to use it still, it's a uh, kind of a bad weapon. And I think most two-handed weapons would fall into that category of just being too slow. Which is a shame, because they're kind of, kind of what I see and envision as the Barbarian. And as this guy's making his way through the dungeon, trying to de defeat Warlocks, I imagine him using like, the biggest, baddest axe possible. You know, a horseman's axe just doesn't really, to me, feel like a Barbarian. As this bat descends from the darkness, we do have to take care of him without taking too much damage. They can often chip away a little bit of your health, basically just because they dodge and mess up your swing so much. We see a guy down below us, and we get this portal and then get incredibly frustrated with this barrel. Because <laughs> you have to, like, crouch jump over top of it. And we have a full inventory of loot, so we're really tempted to leave. And there's a portal down below as well, so we're just going to take this portal. As we have a full inventory, we can gamble some of this stuff. And maybe we'll find a horseman's axe to help us cleave through some of these warlocks populating goblin caves. So we get another barb friend. He's just starting out as well. And then we got this guy. Yeah. I don't understand how this guy has put himself in a situation where he's needed to use second wind. But, uh... It's absolutely insane that he's popping second wind with a full inventory of meds. Our barbarian friend of the purest type seems to get himself in a little bit of a scuffle and seems he survived. But we're gonna take off and see what we can get from the merchants with our gold. Really hoping there's a horseman's axe or at least something worthy to gamble on. We did find quite a bit of stuff quite quickly. That warlock helped us with our looting as we're gonna come away with probably over 100 G's worth of stuff. A couple greens as well. Yeah, I think it's it's a bit over 100 G. Which is very nice, which means we can gamble and just pray. And pray that the merchants give us something good. And unfortunately, we got... Yeah, double axe I've never used and I'm not a big fan of them. I feel like they get countered by so many things as well. You, I don't think you can block on them. I may be wrong there. But Bardish, yeah, an okay battle axe. Nothing really exciting or better than what I'm wearing or you're currently using. And the Gambo is kind of crap because there's no weapons, which is kind of a shame. Because a weapon upgrade is pretty much your biggest power spike you can get when you're running a light-geared Barbarian. This is kind of a tough spot. Uh, like, four damage more on the Bardish and a mediocre Felling Axe isn't going to be a whole lot of fun. It's going to be tough. It's going to be a battle if we keep these weapon setups that we have. We are going to Gambo on the pants, and we get basically nothing. Really, we're hoping for a strength roll or anything at all. Even green would have been nice to see. But, uh, as you know, Goblin Merchant is not that kind. And we're tempted to tempted to buy a Northern Turnu because we're going so slow already. But that would really hurt our movement speed to the point where you may as well just, uh, yeah, at that point, with the amount of Rangers and Warlocks, and now Fighter having even more armor penetration on the crossbows, I think Barbarian is probably at its lowest point it's been in a long time. Landing Felling Axes, everyone says, are super broken, but if you're even a competent player with okay movement speed, you can generally dodge them or make it incredibly difficult to land them. So we're going to grab some Agi Gloves just to have something on our hands, keep them warm in the dungeon as we wield these axes. But, yeah, going up against a fighter, you almost need Reckless Attack, and you can't take Reckless Attack because you're usually relying on Achilles Strike to deal with any any range targets. So the 50-50 pick between the two of them is a real struggle. And I'm tempted to switch to Crush here if I'm going to be running Bardish because it does improve your impact power, which I think increases stagger on blocks. And just by chance, we may run into a guy with a shield or a weapon that blocks. Very unlikely, but you never know. So this is our setup. We're debating that armor again, but it's not going to happen. We get a green Gambison which doesn't do a whole lot for us, magical interaction speed, which I think just helps you open portals or shrines, which isn't really something we're going to be doing a whole lot of in Goblin Caves. So, we have a little bit of coin left, and we decide, why not sell the sell the other Bardish to buy this one, we might as well take the slight damage upgrade, rather than having gold sitting in our inventory doing nothing. So we do this, it's not going to change too much of how our build's set up, 
but it is an option that is considered an improvement. So we may as well spend our coin as it could be the last time we see any of it. Jumping into this one, we don't get a chance to really look around because I want to see the damage on this Sardish. 9,706 damage. It makes me so happy seeing those damage numbers. But you don't ever really get to use them. We got a lightly geared fighter, and I think I just saw a glimpse of a blue Falchion, which wouldn't surprise me. Even though Falchion has been nerfed quite hard, I still think it's a pretty solid weapon because of its reach. Jumping into this next game, we get a spawn that can be very exciting. If you're ready to PvP, I should basically start staring at an opponent. It looked like it was that fighter guy with the blue falchion. Something I'll have to be very cautious of. If he's coming up here to fight us, we're definitely going to try to hit him with a Achilles strike. But, uh, it seems he's just kind of messing around, heading on through. That thing just barely touched me as I swung way too early. It's kind of a shame. And no one gives us a torch for our troubles. Not a great trade-off. Forcing to use one of these pots we bought. Not a huge problem, as that fighter must be making his way to Centipede, to farm Centipede or something. Not too often you see a guy just beeline for that door, unless they're heading to Centipede. We could grief him if we went up top and jump down in, but I want to loot some of this stuff, and there could be pots in this room he left open. We do get a strength pendant there, which is kind of nice. This is a room I usually like to loot. Sometimes you do find the odd health or protection pot. Finding a bunch of clarity pot and invis pots is pretty pretty bad. But uh, this part of these can clear up mobs quite nicely if you can get your swing distance down. Sometimes you're swinging so slow you do get clipped in the hands by their little, uh, little poison knives. But unfortunately, fortunately we can no longer use that drum, which is kind of a sad day as I posted a video just hours before, before the nerf. It does basically nerf Barbarian's opportunity to land Achilles Strike. I find it can be quite difficult to land those Francesca Axes, and they're not cheap. 24 gold for two of them. You're starting out on Barbarian, it's not really something you can afford most times. So you're usually spending that 50 gold on pots, and rather than spending, you know, if you're buying three sets of them, uh, and almost 75 G's just for the opportunity to land an Achilles strike on a ranged target. And even still, doesn't always kill them, doesn't always slow them down enough, still oftentimes have a lot of ground to make up. We're going to take a quick rest just to see if we can get our HP back to full before we run into our next, our next combatant. Or maybe our next mob. Kind of forgetting we have Crush. I saw this barrel break and I was like, oh, wait a second. Why is it only taking one hit? And I remembered we're not using Axe Specialization anymore. We're using Crush. Which um, is a good thing to remember mid raid, as it can help you escape. We get a guy opening a door close to us. We wait and see what we have, and it's a fellow barbarian. Potentially one of those foul. foul beasts. That is the Orc Barbarian Hybrid. And that means, that is the case, we need this guy to die. Unfortunately, they do a very good job of hiding it with all their gear and armor. And the only way to find out is to absolutely smash them in the face with an axe until you can take off their helmet. He's got a War Maul, which is a unique choice. And the War Maul's been kind of buffed with a 30% armor pen. So that thing will basically just rip through any of my little armor reduction I have. So this guy's on his way up, so we land a Bardiche to his... Looked like a red mouth and red face. And he's not of this world and not a true barbarian. So if we take him out and remove him of all his meds and some decent rings. That should get some nice upgrades to our armor and a whole bunch of throwing axes. Like I said, these throwing axes are not cheap. This guy spent a bit of money on this gear. For it to be basically destroyed by my Bardation Achilles Strike. We spared him the trouble of dealing with what's coming next, as we're about to get into a situation that is typical to the Barbarian class right now. Making sure our Franciscas are all in the right spot. Hoping we don't need to use them all. This guy had a lot of meds on him, and we have some decent gear, so I'd love to be able to make it out of here alive. 
This room is kind of a ranger or whatever class paradise as they can sit at the other end of the hallway and spam arrows at you. And the corridors are quite small, so poor barbarian doesn't have a lot of space to space to maneuver. If you're running in a straight line at somebody, it's pretty much game over. We do see a wizard, and I hear a portal somewhere down in that direction. I'm tempted to push this guy, but dodging this mob and whatever projectiles he's going to be throwing our way, it's going to be almost impossible through those axes. Kind of a bad situation. Even throwing a throwing axe here, I'm probably going to end up hitting the axe trap, which always happens, and then my Achilles strike is now basically inert. So he's trying to zap me. Probably, we could probably take him out, considering he's level 1, but this is the real problem. Dark Magic user himself, pushing us from the other direction, trying to hit us with Curse of Pain. And we can't get anywhere near him with this Bardiche to land our Achilles Strike. Missing our throwing axe as he's dodging, effectively, our health is just being melted away without ever getting close to this guy. Now we're in one-shot range, he does have a backup weapon for Blow of Corruption, and he can just keep hammering us with spells to no end. His cast speed was crazy fast. There was no break between casts. And that is it for this warlock hating barbarian. And this is why Goblin Caves has become increasingly difficult. Back to back games with guys with basically high roller, hell, and loot. Stuff you would be taking into high roller with your three stack to dominate other teams. We are seeing more and more of in Goblin Caves. So this ends our story, and this ends this Barbarian Permadeath run, and I thank you all for spectating and watching. I'll see you all in the next video. Cheers.